Hey everybody, welcome to today's live stream. It's happening today, finally. I apologize for messing up yesterday. I, I set the, the, the pre-recorded thing, or, or like set it up basically, and I didn't look at the date, I guess. I thought it was for today, so I apologize for everybody that came yesterday. Um, I was just sitting down to record a podcast episode, and I get the, all these messages from, uh, from Doug, <laughs> and I was like, oh, hold on, Casey, I gotta go put out some flames over here on the, <laughs> on the YouTube so anyway, uh, so today we're going to be doing some baby dragon eggs. So I got these little baby dragons sent to me from Jen over at Stormwind's Creations. They're really cool. Let me switch to the new overhead cam. I'm really happy with this new setup. Uh, I've gotten a couple of people say that they like it too. But check these things out. How cool is that? What? Yeah. So she sent me three of them. We're only going to do one today. Um, I wanted to kind of see how... It went, I, I think, <laughs> I guess. Um, these are kind of smooth. Uh, so that's that's the one issue that I, I'm a little worried about. I've had, you guys know that I've had issues with smooth things and you get those kind of shiny spots on them. So we're gonna go for just one today and see how it goes. Uh, but pretty cool things. I think that there's a lot of cool things you could do with these. Um, and what I did was I made a little bit of a die stabilized Buckeye Burl piece. I thought this would be kind of a perfect dragon egg blank. And it kind of matches the colors. Um, I'm going to go with this guy that's got a little bit of blue and the kind of teal green, seafoam green in there. And we're just basically going to glue him onto here and then cast him. So it's not going to be very in-depth or crazy today. We're just doing, like I said, focusing on one thing. Um, but I'm super excited. I hope you guys are too. I already have a link down in the show notes if you guys want to pick up ba the baby dragons. Um, I believe I was talking, is Jen here? She was going to kind of keep an eye on things, maybe pop in. I don't see her. So she might come eventually. And if you guys have questions for her, I don't know a whole lot about these things. I just, we kind of talked a little bit. Um, one, I was mentioning that, you know, <laughs> with the smooth surface thing, I was, I was asking her about, I, I said I might scuff them up and she's like, don't do that. That'll kind of mess up the, the paint job, I think, or, or something about them. So I'm not going to scuff them. Um, and I was also saying that I usually wash things off with denatured alcohol and that could also affect things. So I would say if we end up running into any issues with, you know, like the, those shiny spots, which I think is an adhesion problem, I think what I would probably do at that point is I'm going to talk to her or, or just maybe test on one of the other ones, um, cleaning it off with some just soap and water. Um, that should also degrease it if there's any greasy spots. I've been handling these things. So I'm actually kind of giving these we're gonna put these through the ringer kind of because I haven't done any treatment or done anything. I haven't even really been careful. I'm holding them with my fingers. I don't even really like holding things because there's oils on your fingers. So if you're gonna cast it, I usually try to avoid that. So anyway, it should be kind of fun. Like I said, we'll figure these things out if there are any issues. Um, I'm sure that we can figure out how to get a better bond. What I'm gonna use for the resin today is Amazing Clearcast Plus. I think this is a perfect you know, shot, a, a perfect, um, project for using that, having the, the UV inhibitors in it. It's also an epoxy which tends to, in my experience, it seems a little stickier. It, it likes to stick things, stick to things a little bit better than urethanes sometimes. So I, I don't know. We're going to give some, give, give a couple of attempts with different stuff. And like I said, we're doing one today. If we run into any issues at all, then we'll come back and, and try and figure out how to avoid the problems next time. So anyway, I hope everybody's doing good today. Um, I have been just, beginning of the year, and I've already mentioned this a little bit. Um, oh, there's Jen, she's right there, cool. Um, so beginning of the year, I, I usually try to kind of make some changes, plan some stuff. So I've been kind of just getting things, you know, set up in the shop, doing little minor upgrades. So not a lot going on really. And, and you'll probably notice I haven't really been that active on Instagram and Facebook and all that. Um, what I, the problem is I need to focus on one thing at a time and I get kind of, when, when there's too many things going on, it all goes to pot. So that's, that's wh why I haven't been very active. I'm just trying to get all the planning done, get a couple things kind of, you know, settled and then we'll kind of roll into stuff. And I'm hoping, I, I want to ask you guys for a little bit of patience this year. I'm trying to, <laughs> one of the things that I don't do is plan. I'm not very organized. Most of you can probably tell. Um, and I, that's one of the things that I really want to work on this year. So the problem with that is if you're trying to start new habits, 
you it takes more time. You got to set yourself up for success. So it's going to take a little bit of time this year, but I'm going to be streaming every week. That's not going to be a problem. Videos, I may not be able to get as many videos going uh, at the beginning because I want to be more organized. So the goal is hopefully the content will be better <laughs> if I if I do a little bit more organizing and planning beforehand. So a little bit of patience up front hopefully will produce better results in the end. <coughs> so anyway, let's stop real quick and see who's in the chat. I know a lot of you guys showed up. I, I, I really apologize for yesterday. Didn't even, uh, and thank you to, to Doug for letting me know. It would have been horrible if I would have just let, left you guys hanging and not known because <laughs> I wouldn't have otherwise known. I wouldn't even have looked. So we got, let's see here, Ramsdale. Philip, I got the package. It actually didn't arrive until yesterday. I haven't opened it yet. Um, so I'm going to be doing that. I'll probably open it up on Friday. Um, I'm going to leave it and make it kind of a surprise. I got to get some work done today. I don't want to open it and then be like, okay, great. Put it, <laughs> put it aside. Uh, let's see, Exotic Tones is here and Jen and Doug is here. Thank you again. I really appreciate you letting me know. I say Christina Dominic's here and Nick is here. And Jim, man, so many of you guys. I appreciate you guys showing up and having fun with us today. Got here at the at the very start. Yeah, actually, I was kind of on time. I, I, I would have probably been dead on time today, but um, I, I started uh, started the stream up, and I'm looking, and the mic wasn't <laughs> picking up, so I, I was like, oh, no. Always something. Okay, and one other announcement before we get going. Um, I did finally contact Streamlabs because we've been trying to figure out how to do a giveaway. They have this thing, CloudBot, that supposedly will allow me to do a giveaway in the chat during live streams. And I gotta be honest, guys, I think I had it set up correctly. You don't have to do the loyalty thing, uh, according to them. It does work on YouTube, uh, so... Um, and I had one other question. Maybe the problem was I wasn't telling you guys how to enter right. I don't know. This stuff is not that hard. But So what we're going to do before we begin, uh, we're going to do one more test. <laughs> and again, this is not going to be an actual giveaway. I just I really need to figure out how this stuff works. And then once, that, once it works, I, I plan to do some giveaways during the streams. I, I think it'd be really cool. You know, we can do it while you're here. Uh, one of the problems that I have with doing giveaways on just my YouTube channel is they, they're, they're long drawn out, you know, and last time I didn't even get contacted by the guy. That's not to, not to say that I'm going to stop doing them altogether on, on regular videos, but, you know, if we're doing stuff weekly and I got stuff that I can give away, I would love to give, do it, you know, so, but it needs to be something that works, you know. All right, so here's another test, and let's see here. Let me... Let me look one thing up real quick so that I can tell you guys what to enter. Commands, default. This stuff is kind of complicated, but it's really not that difficult. That's why I'm kind of really annoyed that this isn't, this hasn't worked. All right, so join the active raffle. Let, okay, so let's try, I haven't opened it up yet and hopefully the, the cloud bot will work. What I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the giveaway, and it should hopefully in the, sh in the chat, the little uh, cloud bot thing should say, giveaway open. And so what I'm going to have you guys do is just type in, we're, we're going to do a couple tests real quick. Just type in exclamation mark raffle, R-A-F-F-L-E, no spaces in between, and just see if that works. Um, last time, none, nobody's entries, it didn't like see them, or I don't I really wish YouTube just had this built in. It just would make things a lot easier because it would probably work. All right, so I'm gonna start the giveaway. Giveaway, oh, giveaway open. Let's see if the chat bot, the whatever bot thing says that it's open in the chat first. <sighs> the waiting is the hardest part. There it is. So it's crafting, make sure it's R-A-F-F-L-E. Okay, you guys are doing it right. You guys are doing it right. Still not seeing any entries. 
chat bot. So disappointing. Hmm. I'm going to be, I'm looking up something really quick. It's really ridiculous. I don't understand. Hmm. Oh man. I'm going to refresh my dashboard page. Maybe I need to do that. I don't want to design my own logo. I want to see my giveaway. Yeah, it's not picking any any up. No tickets. Frustrating, guys. Doug is a good speller. Did Doug spell it wrong too? Let's try. Uh, it'd be really awesome if Streamlabs had actual useful help information. The first, the first response I got from them, I, I asked all these questions, and this girl's like, oh, it, it'll just work. And I was like, thanks, that's not helpful. Could you answer my questions? <laughs> Literally, that's what I told her. And I'm like, here, let me, let me number them for you so you can respond to each number. And then she did that, but it's still not working for some reason. Just turn the two blanks. Nice, that's awesome. Yeah, you've been looking at it too. I don't know what the deal is. Like, it's it's it should work. Uh, as far I mean, like I said, this is not rocket science. Like that's why I'm so frustrated with this. It's just, something's not working. Like I either it's like I didn't click something, <laughs> or it's like a checkbox is not checked or something because it's not working. Let's try one other thing, and I'm trying to figure out. I don't. I'm not familiar with how um, how the with all the little, like, how you enter certain, you know, things, like the, the commands and all that stuff, and, and, like, the operators that go with the commands. But let's try one other thing, and I'm going to type it in. Try raffle and then space zero. I don't know. <laughs> you wonder who raffle was? Yeah, we're trying to get <laughs> raffle to work. Yeah, IT people. I, well, it, she's not even an IT person, I don't think. She was, I don't know. I was like, you're unhelpful. Thank you. Um, so try try entering it this way. Because, um, like, the the thing, I'm, and I'm trying to, I know that most of you guys are like, I don't care about this giveaway. And I and I totally agree, and I'm, I'm frustrated about it, too. I don't like wasting time. But um, what, I, what, what, what? The way this is supposed to work, the reason I'm having you type in zero is um, like it supposedly needs tickets to work. I, I don't know. I don't understand this thing. Um, maybe even try typing in raffle, you know, exclamation raffle and then one. I don't think it'll work. If, I don't think I can enter necessarily. I'm not even sure if mods can enter. I think they can, but. Uh, let's try raffle one. No, it definitely is exclamation. Every command that you do is going to start with exclamation. I, I know that for sure. Um, but, yeah, try, I don't know. Try all kinds of different stuff. Wasting time is what I do at work. Nice. There still are no entries going in. This is... They're like, look, we have this amazing thing. It's so awesome. Doesn't work. Nothing. No tickets, no users. And that was another one of the questions that I, you know, I'm trying to understand what could possibly be going wrong. And so it's a custom, not a merch one. Um, so I'm trying to, like, you know, uh, figure out what could have, what could possibly be causing the failure. You know, like, like 
I would expect an IT person that actually knows what they're doing to ask. So, you know, I'm asking, well, do you need to have a loyalty program? Do you need a loyalty program to have polls work? And like the poll thing doesn't work, nothing, none of this stuff actually works where the commands that you guys enter are doing anything. So I don't understand, I don't understand. And they have nothing like, there's no information about like, oh, you have to do this if you want people to actually get entered. Like there's, you know, it's not like I'm, I don't know. And I, I admit that I'm, it's probably something I'm doing. I, I would, I, it's likely, but why is it that hard? I just don't know. Yeah. Not, <laughs> all right. Really irritated. Yeah, I know. It's very irritating. All right, so we're gonna end this. We're gonna quit. I don't think CloudBot is working at all. So, oh, actually, I need to go back in. I'm gonna close the giveaway because it's not working, obviously. I'm sorry, guys. We'll get this to work somehow. The problem, the, the other thing that I really don't like about this is I can't, there's no way that I can do testing without doing a live stream like an actual live live stream and that's also silly so let me i closed it there's no winner uh let's see let me just oh, my mouse now my mouse isn't working what is going on it's all going to pot guys come on there we go let's see if yeah there's no entries to pick from it says thanks <laughs> so we're gonna how do i close out the thing man ridiculous hmm. all right we've closed it yeah i closed it sorry guys it's still not working and i mean i'm trying tried everything i can think of at this point so since I can't figure out how to do a giveaway, let's do something that I can do, <laughs> hopefully. We're gonna do some resin casting. So, uh, like I said, what we're gonna use is Amazing Clearcast Plus for this. I've got that little burl piece in the oven uh, just to heat it up a little bit, just in case there, was, there shouldn't be any surface moisture here in my shop, but just in case there was some, a little bit of surface moisture or something on there, I like to heat up the burl. Um, another thing that heat does uh, that I don't know how much of a big deal, how, how I don't know, I, I don't know how, how uh, important it is, but w warmer things also, you know, like if you heat it up, it's going to have left, less surface tension as well, which sounds like it could be useful. I don't know a whole lot about that, but maybe. Um, so we got the burl in the oven. I don't think I'm going to heat up the little guy, um, but the first step that we actually need to do um, I'm not going to heat up the guy, the little baby dragon first. Um, first thing we need to do is actually glue this dude on to that burl. So what I'm going to use for that is five minute epoxy. Um, so I'm just going to take this thing out. It's, it was warming up a little bit. It'll cool off while we're doing this. Um, I typically would have done this beforehand, but I wanted to show you guys what was going on. So I'm going to do the casting area and the, the overhead kind of mixture view. Um, so this is, this is a three inch PVC pipe. That's what I'm going to be using. Uh, it's a clear one. I got links to where you can get the clear PVC on my website. And then I got one of the Turner's warehouse plugs. What I'm going to do, you can kind of see there's some funky funkiness going on, some glitter and <laughs> who knows what. So I'm going to blow that thing off first. Clean off any dust that's on that thing, so we because we're just going to go for a clear casting on this one. Uh, I don't want to add anything else because I don't want to mess up. I, I want to be able to see everything. This is kind of a test run for me, um, just to make sure that everything works, and then we'll do the other two another time. Um, so I'm just going to go with dead clear uh, resin. So I got that nice and cleaned off, so no little particles end up coming up. Um, I'm going to go over uh, way away, and I'm going to spray this guy. I guess that doesn't really work. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this a little bit smaller just so that I'm not hiding behind it. I'm going to go spray this with some stoner mold release, um, but I'm going to go way away because I don't want anything that's in the air to get on these little baby dragons. So I'm, I'm literally leaving my shop area for a sec to spray this. 
And I'm going to give it a good coating just to make sure. Not to the point where it's dripping, but I want to make sure that the whole thing is coated. Uh, I've done some tests, and so far, the, even the urethane, you know, the purple one, the stoner urethane mold release, which is meant for Alumilite Clear, um, it seems to work fine. And I've always used that for liquid diamonds epoxy as well. So I think that it's not really that big of a deal. You know, I don't need to actually put that together yet. But so let's get some five minute epoxy. You could also use like a UV resin probably. Um, my only issue is the five minute epoxy will be compatible without having to really wait or wait for a full cure. It'll definitely be compatible with you know, epoxy casting resin. So I'm just gonna glue it on there. And we were kind of talking about maybe scuffing it up. I don't think you need to scuff the, the thing up just to glue it on. Um, all we need to do is have it just kind of hold it in place. That's the only thing that we're doing with this. So um, I don't really think that scuffing is necessary because once the casting resin cures, it's, it ain't moving anyway. So let's get this guy out of the way. Am I on kind of camera? I'm actually gonna go for the overhead real quick. For now, oh, that's not the right one. I should just call it overhead. <laughs> I have all these weird names. Canon, that's not a very good description. So this is just, you know, whatever kind of five minute epoxy I got off the shelf from Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever I got it. Um, any five minute epoxy will do. I haven't found one that didn't work very well. We're just putting equal parts in this little cup. We'll mix it up and then we'll add a little blob and we will be good. So I got to go snowboarding finally for the first time this season last week. That was fun. We're kind of in a dry, uh, supposedly we're gonna be getting a storm maybe today, but it's gonna be pretty weak. So um, we're kind of in a dry pattern right now but we're hoping that at the end of the month we get dumped on, possibly, or something. Um, we got kind of hit hard at the beginning of, like, in, in no November. We got a huge storm. Like, we had at our place where I live, um, and this is, you know, obviously not in the mountains. Um, we're kind of in the valley. We're still at high elevation, but we had, like, a foot of snow almost, like, eight inches, six or eight inches. I don't know. Maybe not, maybe not a foot. It was a lot. It was a ton down in the valley so they got slammed up in the mountains and it's pretty much i haven't really gotten too much we got a little bit i guess in in at the end of the year but it was kind of wasn't amazing not, not not a huge amount a little blob i'll show you what a little blob is and one thing also that i that i have noticed is sometimes if you have like a big blob like it's literally like a glob of of you know glue um, sometimes that shininess, like it doesn't really adhere to that. So I'm going to go for kind of the, the minimal amount possible. Um, I was even thinking about it. If, if you, you could probably even, I, I think this is overkill and I think you risk causing more problems than it's worth. But if you wanted to, you could like get one of those super tiny drill bits and drill and just put a little piece of wire to kind of hold him and just glue that wire piece in him and and that way you wouldn't you wouldn't run into that. But I think if you just kind of if you're just kind of careful, I think it's uh, you won't see the glue. He's going to be kind of laying on it anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. I don't really I don't know. I know some people kind of get a little bit, you know, they're really shooting for like especially with the the Star Wars things like like you know uh, little vehicles and stuff like it's cool if the plane or the the starship thing looks like it's you know completely not being held up by a post like trying to hide it i don't really care so much about that i think that most of the time the only person that really cares is is you <laughs> you know so and, and since i don't care i don't think anyone's going to care really so i'm just going to use a little toothpick uh, where are my where are my toothpicks? Hmm. I moved the shop around and huh. I lost my toothpicks. <sighs> hmm. That's the one thing that uh, that has that I've lost <laughs> during my 
rearranging. Huh. Oh, there they are. I found them. I'm going to put them where they go on the, I put them on the top of my oven. All right. So we got a little bit of time with this. I'm actually just going to kind of wait a second for it to kind of, kind of, kind of blob up a little bit. Oh, good. Billy's doing okay. I think he's doing better. That's good. Yeah, people were asking. Uh, I believe they are uh, a 3D print resin. I think that's what these are made out of. Um, I'm not entirely certain about how all the how, how these are made. And so what I was thinking for this is I kind of, and I, and I took a rotary tool and just kind of carved out a little bit of a dish in there just because, just to, to make this guy fit a little bit better. And I was just thinking that's, I'm just going to kind of, you know, he's just going to kind of sit in there. He fits pretty well. It, it was already kind of contoured to, to kind of fit this. I, I chose this piece because of the way it was, you know, shaped and everything. Um, so, and I'm looking at this, I'm just trying to figure out where the glue spots are. Cause I don't have like a giant flat spot necessarily on this. Looks like down here is kind of where he's sitting on that, that, uh, dished out part. And I could even add just a little bit down, like right in, right in here possibly as well. So let's, let's do that. I'm just going to put a little bit down on the bottom. And this is what I'm, this is what I mean by a blob. I don't know if you can see that, but it's a very, very small amount. And I'm just going to kind of put on the surface here. And then I can come back in a sec and uh, add a little bit more if I want. So he's kind of touching up there as well. I could add some there. I think I'm going to try and get some right in, in that little kind of crease. I'm going for very minimal and this is not going to be rock solid. So I need, you know, I'm going to need to be careful moving this around because I'm going for the absolute minimum. All I want to do is just kind of hold this dude in place for a sec while I cast, you know, oh, that's not working. There we go. Okay, so I got those, those, there's just a little tiny blob holding them there. And hopefully the bottom is working as well. And I think I'm just going to kind of let it sit. Sort of. Wants to roll. There we go. So we're just going to let that sit, try and let it work well. Um, yeah, you could use UV resin. Um, what I was saying about that is you just have to make sure that it cures fully. Um, cause you can get some issues with, I I've seen issues with, with UV resin. Um, I'm going to add a little bit more to the bottom. I'm just a little bit worried that that wasn't, I put a very small blob. I want to make sure I'm going to add it to the, now that I can see which part of him is actually touching. I'm going to add a little bit more just to make sure that he doesn't go scooting around. It would be the worst if I cast this and it like fell off, <laughs> you know, like moved when I, you know, when I was pouring the casting resin, that's not what I want. Like, frankly, at that point, I'd much rather just see a, a little blob of glue in there. Um, a couple other things about this. So I got, I got this whole package and they came in this nice little baggie and they were wrapped really well and you get a little sticker and a thank you card. So very good packaging from Jen too. Um, and like I said, there's links in the show notes to her website. I, I believe that they might be out right now, but she was going to get some definitely, uh, stocked up tomorrow for sure. Um, she might've gotten some today. I'm not sure. She's in the chat somewhere, I think. Um, and there's different sizes as well. Um, I can't remember offhand. Maybe she can. Is Jen still here? Uh, I'm not sure if she's still here, but um, 
Oh, there, there they are. Yeah, there she is. 524 Gen. Um, what sizes do you have? Because I know there was like three, I want to say. three si She's working on them right now, guys. Um, there, I think there's three sizes. And I'm not entirely, do I have the two inch? It looks like two inches to me. I think it was like one, two, and three inch. Is that right? Yeah, I did do the mod and approved user. Oh, it works for you. Well, <laughs> good for you. No. <laughs> uh, Streamlabs, uh, yeah, I, I moderated Streamlabs and then approved user. I mean, well, yeah. I think that's the same thing, but yep. One, two, and three inch sizes, nice. And I got the two inch, just to let you guys know. I would probably say the one inch would probably work pretty good for a bottle stopper. Um, this guy's, you know, this is a three inch, um, you know, oh, shouldn't, shouldn't have done that. Uh, <laughs> this is a three inch pipe that we're gonna be casting. So, you know, so just to kind of give you an idea of the two inch on this, like I'd say the three inch, I'd probably wanna put that on a four inch, um, you know, pipe type casting, most likely. Um, if you're going to do this, and I'm, and I'm going to kind of do like a dragon egg type deal with this, uh, I believe. One thing that I'm thinking of, though, is this is also kind of just a really cool piece that I, I can go both ways. But um, rather than worrying about even, you know, making the entire thing like, like an egg itself, um, I think it would actually be pretty cool looking if you just did a flat bottom and then kind of an egg top, possibly, too. I, there's a couple different things that, that you could go with this. Obviously, the dragon egg, you know, just making the egg for this type thing is kind of the what you would think first. But I was just kind of thinking a little bit about, I don't know, what, what, what you could make with it. What else, what other project ideas do you guys have for these? You guys got anything in mind? Art's here. How's it going, man? And Scott's here, too. I just saw you. Brick house. Nice. Shop dog. No, I think you could shine the light under and, and cure UV resin. The problem is I would prefer to fully cure it, and I don't want to sit here. Uh, I've just had issues. Um, the best way to cure UV resin, I mean, you can use the torch to set it, but I prefer to take things outside and let the sun, like, leave them there for, like, 20 minutes. Oh, Billy's on oxygen. Ugh. We need to get over this silly virus thing. <laughs> Anyone seen art? <laughs> How's it going, Mark? How, what are you up to? So that's, that's set up a little bit. I'm just going to you know, wait a second here. We're just going to have to, to be, be a little bit patient. Grab a drink. Richard's here. How's it going? And Mark, too. All right, so I hope that's not the one I was going for. That one. Kind of go for that. The only problem with this view is you can't see my face. Uh, not that I care or you guys necessarily do, but, you know, just chilling. Nice. Yeah, we're, that's what we're doing here. We're just kind of chilling. So just to let you know, what I, what I think I'm going to do for mounting this I think I'm actually going to hot go just put put a couple blobs. It doesn't fit like super tight in this this uh, PVC pipe, uh, the burl piece. So I think what I'm going to do is is just put a couple little blobs of hot glue up in there. Um, I, I know it's going to have to sit above this too, so I'm going to have to kind of figure that out. But I think that'll that that way it'll just hold it in place. I don't have to worry about it possibly uh, floating or anything like that. I, it shouldn't, but. With something like this, I really don't want to screw it up. It's best if you can hold it in place somehow. 
Um, and we were, Chad and I were talking about these things. You could probably even like put a, I mean, really, you could probably put like a screw or something up in through this thing. If you wanted to, to hold, you know, burl chunks down, you could probably kind of screw up into them um, through this. Um, I haven't really looked into it. I usually just kind of pull the hot glue gun out, <laughs> but you know, always good if you can, you know, hold things down just, just to make sure in some cases, you know, even though you, th that's stabilized fully, um, you know, some, I have had things that are fully stabilized float on me, you know, not too often, but could happen. So I just want to let you know. Yeah, yeah, you can, M-E-K you can add, but that kind of defeats the purpose of having infinite open time. <laughs> you know, I mean, at that point, you can just use polyester resin without the UV, kind of. I mean, I know that you, you get the, if you UV, it'll it'll cure, but I don't know. I don't I don't really use UV resin that much, though, so I don't really know what I'm talking about. I don't think you can, I don't think hot glue will stick to silicone. So I don't think that'll work. I mean, even HDPE, it's not like it, it's a really good bond. You know, it, it'll pop off if you move, if you hit it enough. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to, I'm going to attempt fate here. I'm going to. Oh, he's stuck on there pretty good. Okay, so I think we're good. I'm gonna, let's see here. What I am gonna do is I am gonna mark on the pipe because this, this thing is gonna go in there. Let me, let me, get to, let me do the overhead view because I can show you guys a little bit closer. This stopper is gonna go up into our pipe some way. And so I'm gonna mark that. That way I know, and I can kind of stick the little thing in there and, and just, squirt a blob of glue real quick just like i said just as a little added little added help uh there there's a couple like there's a kind of a flat spot on this see what i mean so i'm just going to kind of shove a little bit of glue in there and everything should work good now i did spray this so it's it's not going to be the best but whatever we're we'll be okay you know i'm going to pop that into the oven and just to let you guys know, it's not like I do this kind of stuff a lot. I'm sure there's other people that are much better at this. But I'm just going with the things that, how I think it would work best for me. Um, so, well, the one thing that I didn't do was figure out, do a calculation on how much resin this is going to take. So, hmm, let me do, let me, let me, I'm going to write some notes down here. Here's my little book. So, today is 1.13. We're doing baby dragon egg. Three inch PVC pipe and we're using ACC plus. All right, so I'm gonna, the, the, the calculation that you use for this is you're gonna take pi r squared times the height, okay? So radius squared one and a half times one and a half times 3.14 times, let's see, I'm going to take this guy out here and I'm just going to kind of estimate how much I think, I don't know, I'm just going to go for like two thirds of this pipe. That ought to give me plenty. If I have to, ACC plus has a really long working time. So I don't have, you know, I can just mix up more if I'm short on it. Not that worried about it, but I'm just going to measure this and we're going to go with about oh, three and a half inches tall, let's say. That should, like I said, give me plenty. Times 3.5. And then I'm going to multiply it by 0.554 times 29. So we're looking at like 397 grams. This is weight. Um, but... I guess you could just stop. Yeah, three, yeah, that's true, 320. I'm gonna go with 350. 
Um, so, and I've found at this point, really, you can just use, you can convert the grams to, to liters, um, to milliliters. I, I think it works perfectly fine. And I'm, I just, I know I'm better with weights because I've been using Alumilite Clear Slow Set for so long. Um, <clears throat> so I think in, in grams a lot of times, but then I can just convert it. So um, ACC Plus is one to one. So this is Amazing ClearCast Plus. Um, this has the UV, the plus is the UV inhibitors in it. Um, and so it's gonna resist yellowing for a lot longer. Uh, Lumalite Clear Slow Set has nothing, no UV inhibitor in it at all. Um, other epoxies, some of them have UV inhibitors in them, varying amounts. Um, Alumalite claims that ACC Plus is like very high uh, resistance, so we'll have to see. Um, but we don't want our clear resin yellowing, of course, so that's why I picked this. Uh, so let's see here, where's my milliliters? Ounces. Must be this milliliters. There we go. All right. So here's where we need to go, and then we also need to do about 175. So or wait, yeah, three. What are we doing? 350. 350. 175 times two. So I'm gonna grab another color. I'm gonna grab a red one, so I know where the first line is about. Uh, and I see some people. Even some manufacturers, which blows my mind, tell you to like put equal amounts in two cups and then pour one in the other. That is not a good way to do this, I don't think. <laughs> so I I, rec I always recommend pouring both A and B in the same cup because the problem is you're never going to scrape the sides of both you know the cup out. You're going to leave some in there, so that's not a very. I don't find that to be particularly accurate, personally just my own my own thoughts definitely wouldn't do that with weight you know uh, so uh, we're gonna pour in our part a 175 grams of it which view okay you're on the overhead I'm gonna switch views so you can see if you're if you're doing volume measurements like this you can't read, accurately read, the side of the cup from here. If you're looking diagonal, you have to get down at the level of those lines. Otherwise, it's, it'll throw you off a little bit. So just, just kind of a little tip. You'll get your squats in for the day. <laughs> but you want to get down at that level so that you know, you know where it is. Now, I don't have a tick mark at 175, but I'm just going to shoot in the middle of 150 and 200 so it's you know accuracy is only so much but that looks pretty darn good actually i think we're good on that part a we'll add 175 milliliters of and i could have used any of these numbers and things but i just this is easiest for me. And then we're going up to 350. Ooh, nailed it. Sweet. Okay. Get those guys out of the way. We'll get our stir stick going. And I'm going to pressurize this, so I really don't care about mixing in air bubbles. But this stuff's pretty thick. Um, that's one of the things that I actually don't really like about Amazing ClearCast. And some of the bar, like the bar top epoxies, most of them are like, I mean, this is like molasses, kind of, kind of thick. So it gets a little bit tiring when you're mixing it, but it works well for this type of stuff. And it definitely works. What I really like about the thickness is for coating things. We're doing like the tumblers and like I did on the, the pine cone lamp. It's got more uh, surface tension. I don't know, something tension on it. So, you know, it's thicker. So it doesn't want to like drip or run as much, I find. Still got to keep things moving, but 
just to let you know it is a, it's a thick one um, I'd say it's probably about as about the same thickness as um, I haven't tried a lot of epoxies but it's it's it seems if I remember correctly it's pretty similar to stone coats countertop the regular countertop epoxy that stuff's pretty thick so you want to mix epoxies quite well I usually you definitely want to wait until you know the the mixture is clear there's no kind of hazy trails going on but what can happen is even though it looks clear and you don't see any trails there may be some unmixed parts on the sides of the cup so it's always best to you know once you think that you've got it once it looks mixed up really well then give it like another minute or so you know and just make sure you're scraping the sides and all that kind of stuff the the, the easiest thing that you can um the easy one of the one of the biggest things that people have problems with is is mixing and measuring um, those are the two i would say the two most common problems with resin casting is mixing and measuring and they're totally avoidable you know it's easy to avoid them just just make sure you've mixed properly and be diligent with your measuring as good as you can that'll that'll get you on your way those two things <laughs> will get you going pretty well Moisture is probably the third. And then, you know, then there's little little nitpicky things that can happen, especially depending on the kind of complexities and, you know, what all you're, you're putting with resin dyes and wood and all that stuff. Then, then the list starts kind of getting a little bit longer, but oftentimes mixing and measuring. Now, it doesn't smell bad. It has a smell. It kind of just smells like, I don't know, like a... It's very typical of bar top epoxies, I would say, or just, you know, casting epoxies. Not, not particularly strong. I think the B side, I want to say, has kind of a little bit more of a, a little bit more of an odor to it. You definitely don't want to be huffing this stuff. Um, no matter what resin you're using, uh, none of them are safe, <laughs> you know, like 100% safe. Like you want to be in a, in a well-ventilated area. Um, not a bad idea to, to have a little fan going to kind of blow any fumes away from you. Um, always, if you can, you know, crack a window. Do something to, to circulate air so that you're not just breathing this stuff in. And don't get your face down in there, you know, close to it. Um, but I know a lot of people do epoxy tumblers and they're in like, you know, like a, just a bedroom or something like that. Like a tiny room. Sometimes they're in smaller than that, like almost like a closet size thing. And that is not enough ventilation. Um, th at that point, you want to wear a mask um, if, you, if you really can't clear the air. We got pretty high ceilings. Um, we have pretty good air movement. We have a heater system and all that. So I'm pretty good in here uh, for the most part. But I mean, what I, one thing that I would actually like to add just as a little bit of peace of mind is, is maybe just a little fan, you know, right here that just kind of blows any fumes across my shop. That would be nice. But yeah, you always want to protect yourself. Um, you don't want to get resins on you. Wear gloves. Wear the proper breathing stuff if you need it. Proper ventilation and you'll be good to go. Smooth on 325, huh? I don't know. Um, it, a lot of times it really depends on what you're doing. I would say is really what dictates what brands or, or what type of epoxies or resins I would recommend. I personally, I prefer Alumilite Clear Slow Set for most things. 80 to 90% of the stuff that I do, that's what I'm going to pick. But you have to pressurize it. So if that's something that you're not willing to do or don't really want to deal with, then, you know, obviously you want slower setting. Uh, maybe try... Um, I mean, amazing clear cast is all right. I don't know what's what you're having a problem with with it with that stuff. Yeah, does it smell? I, uh, who who was asking about that? Brian. Um, I don't know. Is the smell bothering you? Because I don't I don't know that this would be a whole. Lot. I don't I don't remember what 325 smells like offhand. I, would, I don't I don't know that this would be a lot different. I think Alumilite Clear smells the best out of <laughs> personally. I don't know if it's a personal preference or something, but I it it really just the smell does not bother me, and it's not very uh, strong smelling. 
<clears throat> oh, bubbles. Well, yeah. Yeah, so that's the problem. Um, if you're having problems with bubbles, then I would get a pressure pot. That's, that's the answer to that. Um, one that is um, a little bit thinner. Well, the deep pour, depending on how big you're pouring these things, uh, Alumilite's deep pour is a thinner viscosity, which should help allow bubbles to release. It's also a two hour working time. That could help, um, but it's gonna take a long time for that to set up. Like you're gonna have to wait a week for it to, to harden up. Um, another one that's pretty good is Liquid Diamonds. Um, I, I've been using that for a long time. I, I like it. You can get it at Turner's Warehouse. It's very thin viscosity um, and more uh, comparable. Like it's got like a 40 minute working time so it'd be a little bit more comparable along those lines. Um, but the biggest thing is if, if, you, if you're not using pressure, which that will, that will solve the problem with bubbles, but um, if you're not gonna do that, then you have to stir it like, like driving Miss Daisy type slow for like 10 minutes. <laughs> like it's, I don't have the patience for that. I'd rather just mix it up. I mean, this, this is, let me, let me get the overhead going. This looks like a bubbly mess, but I don't care because I'm gonna, once I put it in the pressure pot, all that's going to be gone. I mean, it's, it looks like, like a soda, <laughs> you know, there's, it's all full of air bubbles, uh, but I got it all mixed up now. It's, it's good to go. But yeah, if you, the, the easiest thing to do is just go for, you know, pressure, but you know, then you got to get a, 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 you know, an air compressor and you know, it's not that simple, but I think that's the easiest way to go personally. Okay, so let's see if I can figure out how to glue this thing on here. Yeah, it shouldn't be that hard. Shouldn't be that hard. I think I can do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue on the dude, on the, on the base here. And there's kind of this like flat. I wasn't being super diligent when I was sanding this thing down. So it's kind of got a little bit of a flat on this side. So I'm going to just put a big blob right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this thing down onto it and then, then stick my, my thing up. I don't know how well this is going to work, but it's better than nothing, I, I figure. <laughs> and I don't really expect this to, to move around a whole lot, but, you know. So I'm literally putting a big blob. And for me, I'm going to turn this off. You know, I'm not that worried about it being on there. Okay. Let's see if I can get this to work. Okay, so I should have no problems with that moving at all. It's actually pretty tight in that pipe. But we got a glue blob right there that should also help um, if you can get stuff you know another way to go is just wedge it somehow if you can just wedge the piece then you don't have to worry about glues or anything like that it's it ain't moving but that's definitely not going to come come apart come come off of there float up or move or, or do anything so that makes me happy okay so now all we got to do, and I'm going to switch to the other view thing. Not that one. <laughs> I really kind of. I am at this point. I'm going to bring this a little bit bigger, that window. Um, but I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. I'm going to get these jugs out of the way. Make sure you guys can see. The, the nice thing is having 45 minutes of working time. I, you're not rushed. That is the one thing about Illumilite <laughs> Clear and slows, even the slow set, you know, it's only 12 minute working time. Like I would have had to be pouring probably at this point. Um, with this stuff, I can just, you know, I could go have a hamburger real quick and come back and we'd still be good to go. So I'm going to, I'm going to, dries too quick. What is 325? Hmm. Hold on a minute. I got to look this up. Since, like I said, since we have time, I want to look up what 325 is. I can't remember now. Oh, is that like the, the opaque one? Hold on a minute. No, 300 is the, the opaque one, right? 
Hmm. Isn't there a different oh, pot life two and a half minutes? That's pretty quick. Yeah, I would just recommend getting a slower setting resin if you're not going to use pressure. That should probably fix your problem right there. That ought to do it, I think. So I'm actually, you know what, let's, since I have time, it is kind of nice having some time. I think we're going to, I'm going to bring this camera in. Sorry about this, guys. Dealing with stuff. We're going we're gonna to bring this, we're going to get in tight. We're going to have two views of tightness. How about that? I can be flexible, you know? And we got, you guys are, are overhead. I'm going to kind of put it in. Yeah, I think that's probably the best. I'm going to move this camera up a little bit. I'm going to pop this guy up a little bit. There we go. All right, so are we ready? You guys ready for the pour? Yeah, I, I will admit, I have a really nice shop. Um, I really would do want to, you guys are probably like, you're an idiot, but for what I'm about to say, I do want to move out of this shop. I want, I want my own house with a shop on site. Because right now I got to drive 30 minutes to get here, which is, for what I do, a pain. You know, a lot of people that are doing kind of YouTube stuff and small scale like manufacturing, like pen blanks, they do it in their garage kind of thing which is a small place. But so I want to have a shop on site, but I have a feeling I'm not going to have, <laughs> you know, our total shop is 4,000 square feet. I got about 800 here and I have a feeling that I'm not going to get, I don't know. I'm probably going to downsize if I do get my own shop. So I don't mean to complain. I know a lot of people don't even have a shop, but so what I'm doing is I'm pouring it down. I want to get it down into the bottom. So I'm pouring kind of slow and, and, and letting it kind of seep down in there. And I'm actually going to only, I'm going to stop. I'm going to, you know, I poured a little bit in there. We're actually going to stop real quick. What I'm going to do is kind of look on the sides here. Just kind of see, make sure, you know, I'm, there's some areas that I'm not going to get resin on because it's kind of tight in the pipe. But you can kind of work it around in the in the pipe and, and get it as, as you know on, on as many surfaces as possible also try to one of the reasons i've stopped is i if you have like really big air bubbles by by kind of moving it around like like super big air pocket things um, the pressure pot won't fix uh, you'll end up with voids there so i like to just kind of roll it around make sure that i'm getting any large bubbles out before i even pressurize it or anything I'm going to try to push this down. Yeah, that's fine. I think it's just kind of crooked. Yeah. I don't think I had it dead, dead flat, the, the bottom of the burl. Because there looks like there's a little bit of a cavity underneath there. Not a big deal. It doesn't matter, though. I'll probably just cut it all off. So just wanted to make sure that I got that stuff all kind of situated quite well. Then again, I'm going to try and get down here. There's kind of a cavity in this area. I'm going to pour down into the bottom and let it just kind of fill up. I'm just pouring a thin stream. Another thing, this Buckeye Burl has a bunch of little holes in it. I don't know if they call, do they call it eyes or something like that? I don't know what they're called, but there's little holes all over the place. And I'll try and get a good close-up shot of what I'm talking about if you're not really familiar with Buckeye. See all those little holes in there next to the Mr. Dragon's head? Let me get a let me get a pointer. I, wish, I need a laser pointer, guys. <laughs> See all these little holes in in the burl itself down right there. So I want to make sure that I'm I'm kind of trying to fill those and not just trap air on top of them. It's kind of tough sometimes, but that's why I'm kind of rolling this around, just trying to let any little air bubbles that might be in those types of things float free and then fill with resin. And I know that I have a ton of air bubbles in this resin and that may be, there may be an argument for um, stirring a little bit slower and, and not having so many little air bubbles in there, but 
I don't know. Again, there's patience and there's me. <laughs> We're just going to give it a little bit. And I might be doing this might be a little bit overkill, but just trying to set myself up for success, you know, trying to avoid air, any, any voids, avoid any voids um, and air bubbles before they happen. If at all possible. Okay. Kind of home free at this point. Let's slow down. I see an air bubble in one of those holes. I'm going to kind of wiggle this around. Try and get that. It's not really wanting to. It's a small one. The pressure pot should take care of it, but. There we go, I got it out of there. Sweet. I don't know, I think Dominic had it. I think 320 might have been dead on. I'm gonna leave a little bit of room on the top just in case this feels like being a bugger to get out if it sticks a little bit. I can kind of, it's, it's typically easier if I don't fill it all the way to the top. I can kind of register stuff. Now, there's so much air in this that I would imagine, um, you know, once I compress the air, those, are, those bubbles are going to be compressed and, and gone, basically. And so the level is going to go down just a little bit anyway. Below this. Just kind of tapping that. I saw kind of a couple big bubbles. I'm going to give it just a little bit more, like I said, because it is going to, the, the level will drop a little bit once it's in the pressure pot. So we're going to get it kind of close to the top, but I have a feeling that it's going to be, this will be a good kind of experiment to see how much the, the air compresses and, and what the actual thing, a lot of people think that the blank might sh be shrinking or something like that, but it's literally, you're just removing the air which takes up space. And so the level of the resin will go down once you pressurize it. All right, so we'll get this view going, put it in this pressure pot. And this is a CA Technologies pressure pot. I'm actually gonna put this also on a little bit of a, where's that? Uh, nope, not that one. <clears throat> I'm just gonna put it on a, a little uh, piece of HDPE just to give it a little bit of a base to sit on. Um, but these CA technologies and they're rated to 80 PSI. I take mine to 70 just to keep below that max. Just kind of a personal thing, but it gives me a little bit of a cushion. And 70 is plenty anyway. I don't know that 70 or 80, I don't know if there's a significant difference between those. And then we just fill her up. And I got my regulator set. I personally would rather have the regulator on the pot itself. I know a lot of people like to take everything off, um, but I don't want to have to mess with my compressor because I use a lot of different tools. I'd rather set regulation or set the regulator for each tool that I'm using rather than, and just crank open my, my uh, compressor, you know, to, to make sure it can handle anything. We're also, you know, some people may be only doing pressure pot stuff, you know, 
um, casting, and that's the only if, if that's the only thing that you use your compressor for, then you could just set the regulator on that to, to some level. But I think it's better to, to, to set regulators on each tool that you use so that you can just let the compressor use anything. And the other thing that's in the back of my head with that is, let's say, typically, 99% of the time, you, um, you know, you, all you're doing is, is, is filling up a pressure pot to, let's just say, 70. You have a CA Technologies pot. And so 99% of the time, you just let, you know, it, it works. It's set to 70 on your compressor or, or so. Um, the problem is, if you change that one time because you need higher PSI and then forget to change it back, you might run into problems. Um, but you're always, you know, the one thing about pressure pots, always leave your safety valve and, and make sure it's set properly as well um, on your pot. Do never remove the safety valve. Um, that's always your last line of defense and will alleviate, um, it'll pop before you overpressurize it. That's the whole point. Um, but I also like, I like having both. I like regulating it. That way I can just slam it on and walk away and I don't have to worry, <laughs> you know. Um, uh, I know the regulator is putting it where I want it. So anyway, let's, uh, let's see here. A pokey tool, that would, that would help too. I actually, I had some, I had a, a, a toothpick. Not too bad. I actually have a pokey. I, well, I want to get another one. I have, it's just a dental pick. And you can buy these. Um, I think like you can pick them up on Amazon. It's kind of like a set. Um, but this, <laughs> this guy's kind of sad. He's all bent and stuff. So I want to pick up some more dental picks sometime. Um, but that would have worked okay. You could also, you know, hit it with some heat, um, either a torch. All you're going to get is the surface. You're not going to get anything down in the resin, but um, you could do that. That's another thing that can help. Um, another thing you can do also is maybe be a little bit more careful than what I was doing, mixing it up, and then just let it sit for like 20 minutes. The air bubbles will float in that cup, and you can just kind of torch them off, and that's another, you know, way to, to deal with bubbles in the cup. Um, usually the bubbles that are in the cup though are so small that they don't really cause that much problem with a casting, I don't think. Um, so I don't really worry about it. And then the pressure pot's definitely just going to take care of everything. But yeah, if, if you don't have a pressure pot and you're trying to avoid air bubbles, uh, you know, you, yeah, I would, I would recommend using a, a slow setting resin. That's, that's kind of a, a necessity. Um, if it sets up in like, you know, two and a half minutes or, or five, even Alumalite clear slow set, it's a 12 minute working time and there's not enough time. Um, it'll, you'll get air bubbles every single time, no matter how careful you are. So, um, you know, you want to be using something that's got like a 45 minute working time that it's got plenty of time to kind of settle out and let those air bubbles float to the surface. Now, the one problem with this scenario is if you're casting something that's got a bunch of junk in, like, um, let's see here. I'm trying to think of a good, very good example. Like, I don't know, you're putting pine cones in, but, uh, or maybe like, like the packing material stuff. I don't know. This is just kind of a good example where... If you were making blanks and you're going to just shove a bunch of this stuff down in the resin, the problem that you have is, I don't care how long the working time is, the air bubbles can't actually free themselves because this is going to trap those air bubbles. So there's a few cases where even if you, you know, even if you had all the cards stacked in your favor, it's very difficult to not have air bubbles if they can't free themselves. So that's why I always, it's just easier to, to for me. I'd rather just stick it in a pressure pot, but you know, I have a shop I'm set up. I can do that. I don't have a problem with it. And I had a budget for a pressure pot too. So, uh, you know, it's kind of tough, but if you're going to go pressureless, um, try and stack all the cards, stir pretty slow, but for a very long time, um, pour it carefully as well. Um, so you're not introducing like air bubbles are not in the resin. You mix them in or, you know, pour them, trap them when you're pouring. So if you pour carefully and let it kind of flow up and fill up in the mold, that'll kind of eliminate some. Um, and, and that slow setting resin definitely helps. Um, you can pop the bubbles on the top with a, a blow torch as they, as they're happening. Um, so hopefully the, a couple of those little things, uh, can kind of help out a little bit. Gary's got soup. <laughs> Those are fun soup emojis. A good cheap pressure pot. 
I can recommend one. Uh, Harbor Freight sells some that are that they're about the cheapest. I don't personally recommend that. If you can if you can stretch your budget a little bit more. Um, let's see here. Uh, TCP Global has a two and a half gallon pressure pot that has um, the same type. Let me let me get a camera on one of my. I'm gonna I'm gonna adjust this camera to show you. I guess. There's a few different models out there that are that are cheaper. CA Technologies is pretty expensive. Um, that is definitely the big drawback to them. But they are fabulous. They are really good. Um, let me let me zoom in. Try to find a pressure pot that has what was that? There's some kind of noise that happened. Try to find a pressure pot that has this type of clamping system. I find it far superior. The other ones have like this pin that dents the lid. Um, this, there's no denting. You got a, a washer. And so I find this system for the lid to be, I think it's gonna be safer and it's gonna last longer. Um, so if you can find a pot that has that, um, that's the way that I would go. Um, another nice thing about this one, I don't know if, can you see it? Yeah, you can see right here. It has, uh, you can mount it to things easily. It's got these brackets and there's a few pots that have that kind of setup. Not only CA Technologies. Um, definitely that's, that's what I would, re it's, it's better. The Harbor Freight pots are just, they're junk. The, the, the little, the wing nuts are way tiny. Like they hurt your hands to, 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 to tighten. And so if, if, if all you have is minimum budget, Harbor Freight is fine, but, um, they'll work, but there's better ones out there for not that much more. It, it, that's my recommendation. Let's see, Mark. Good pressure. Um, a good pressure is below the max on your pressure pot. <laughs> that's, that's it. Um, go as high as you can. Um, you know, more pressure, as far as I know, I, I can't think of one thing that, that would say, that, uh, I, I can't think of one reason not to go as high as you can go. Basically, the idea is pressure is going to collapse the air bubble. So more pressure in my mind, I, I don't know for sure, but more pressure is going to collapse it even smaller. So I've never seen any problems with going higher. The big thing is you need to make sure, like if you're using a Harbor Freight pressure pot, do not go over. I, w I never went over 50 in mine um, when I because I did start out with those. Um, so, you know, whatever the thing is rated for, my, my personal thing is whatever the rating says. So there's typically, they're all, they're all going to say, you know, maximum PSI or do not exceed working pressure of CA Technologies says 80. I always stay 10 PSI below that. And then for Harbor Freight, I think it's 60 is what's on the lids now. Um, I would never go over 50. And so as long as you don't exceed you know, whatever the max PSI is for your pot, you you should be safe. They, they, they should be fine as long as no damage occurs to the litter or clamping mechanisms. So, yeah, but other than that, I mean, go as high as you can safely. That's what I would recommend. That was a really long answer for, <laughs> for, for that. Da oh, sorry, David. You said just don't go over the max. So <laughs> I said exactly what he said. <laughs> Good answer, David. <laughs> Restating the obvious. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Eight gallon Vever. Oh, is that the one that's over in the UK? Like that, um, like Nick Zametti has. It looks like, it's like the same thing, but I think blue. Um, and I think it's kind of the same thing as probably like the California air tools possibly. They're all kind of similar. Um, the California Air Tools, the TCP Global just came out with a no no setup pot. So the, the CA Technologies five gallon, they have one specifically for resin casting. Not CA, California Air Tools, sorry. All these things get kind of mix, mixed up in my head. California Air Tools has one that's for resin casting and it's it's pretty well set up. I think there's just one little thing that you need to add to it out of the box. So the TCP Global has a five gallon resin casting specific one that, that literally is, you can plug it in as long as you have, I think it's as long as you have your female connector on your, your hose, it's ready to go out of the box from what I understand. Both are five gallons or I think they run about 250, 
I want to say 250, 280 dollars. Um, and what was? I'm sorry, I, I totally lost track of what I was saying. Eight gallon Vever. Yeah, I don't know where I was going. <laughs> I totally lost my concentration. What I was saying. But anyway, they're all kind of the same. And I think they're, they're, there's some brand over in the UK, like I said, I think it's, it's different. Whatever Nick uses, it, that looks, they look very similar to the CA Technologies. But the, the TCP Global and California Air Tools ones, they're, I think they're pretty much the same quality, pretty close, um, just maybe slightly lower quality than CA Technologies. Um, CA Technologies, I, personally, I think they are like kind of the, one of the best. Um, Binks and some of the other ones that have the ASME rating, um, those are the best you can buy, but man, those things are like 800 bucks, brand new. So I even, I do this, I stand by these things daily, like all day. And frankly, I'm not going to spend $800 on a pressure pot personally. So, um, I think, like I said, as long as you run it below the max, you should be good. Five gallons is pretty big. So, um, I can't move this cause it's full, but I'll show you what a five gallon is. Uh, let's see. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna do this camera real quick. See if I can make this work. <clears throat> so these, what I usually use, and what I recommend for most people, this is a two and a half gallon. You know, it's about a ten inch or eleven inch diameter kind of thing, and maybe about twelve inches tall. Um, that's two and a half. And then, so this one down here is five gallons. So it's, it's twice as big five gallons. I mean, I've never, there's, it's plenty, uh, for, for just about anything that I've made. There are a couple things that I haven't been able to fit in there. Like I want to make a baseball bat blank, but there's no pressure pot on the planet that's going to fix that problem. It's, it's going to be super long and I'm not, you know, I'm not going to buy a, a 900 gallon <laughs> pressure pot anyway. So I think for, for pretty much everything out there, the five gallon will cover everything that you ever wanted to do. For most people, the two and a half is plenty. Um, you know, especially if you're doing like pin blanks and things like that, even bowl blanks will fit in those. Um, but if you want to make sure that you've got plenty of room for anything that you ever wanted to do, then go with a five. Otherwise you can save some money. And the other thing about the two and a half gallons compared to the five for me, like I'm making blanks all day long. And frankly, I don't like the, the lid on the five gallon personally. It's just, it's, it's much, it's like twice as heavy and it's just, I don't want to be wrangling that thing. So I prefer using the two and a half gallons daily for, for most things. Um, but you know, I have a five gallon for when I need to, when I need that extra capacity. So. Yeah. And for the Dominic's kind of talking about compressors. Uh, a lot of people ask that question and basically you just need something that, that is going to achieve. I would recommend getting something that, that the PSI level that it can achieve is like a hundred, 120. Um, and partly that's because there's no point in buying a compressor that doesn't work for like air tools and other things that you may want to use it for. Just get one that's, you know, powered that can do anything. So one that can go up pretty high, like at least a 120 PSI. Um, you need to be that PSI level that it can, that the compressor, <coughs> excuse me, can go to needs to be higher than what you want to put your, than what you're trying to compress. You know, so if, 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 if you are, if you have a Harbor Freight pressure pot and you're going to go to 50 PSI in it, let's just say for, for example, you can't buy a compressor that only goes to 50 PSI. Um, that's not going to be enough. It needs to actually be higher than what you're compressing. So, you know, just get one that can go higher, like hundred, 120. Uh, most of the, the pancake compressor size style and up will do that. And then the other thing is, um, we were kind of talking about it. If you're going to be filling a two and a half gallon pressure pot, you really want to have at least probably like a two and a half, if not three gallon, um, tank on the compressor. If you got a five gallon, I'd really recommend getting a five gallon compressor, at least five gallon. Um, otherwise that, that compressor motor is going to have to run every single time just to fill it up and, and it just wears on it more. Um, the other thing is it's also going to take longer. So if you continue using the 325 and you got two and a half minutes, 
um, you need to compress that quick. Um, and so, I mean, that, that five gallon takes twice as long to fill. That's another reason why I use these most of the time. Um, that takes twice as long to fill as the two and a half. So, and if your compressor's having to compress air just to fill the pot, it could take minutes, which, you know, the stuff may set up on you. So, anyhow. Yeah. Yeah, the blue one. There's a lot of blue ones out there. Kim, you got to get one. <laughs> just just keep saving up a little bit. Put a little put, have a little change purse and then, you know, take a take a buck every day or, you know, every once in a while whenever you can put it away and then eventually you'll have a pressure pot. <laughs> She's like, "I know. I know how to save money." <laughs> Yeah. So anyway, guys, that's all I got. Like I said, we're only going to do the one today. Um, I want to save those other two guys for, I want to see the results and make sure that everything works as I hope it will work. I don't anticipate any problems, but I just want to make sure. Um, and if we do run into problems, that's why I kept the other ones because I want to do, I want, I'll, I'll try to tweak something, figure out what might've gone wrong and then, and then fix it and then do them again. So we got two more of those guys. I'm really excited about the, the black one. Um, I like, I love the blue ones too, but um, it's cool. We'll be, be able to do a different one. So I'm thinking actually like a red, um, I'm going to try and find a piece of burl that's like red and kind of make it fiery and then have the, the black dragon. So these things are pretty sweet. Uh, don't forget there's links to where you can get the baby dragons. She's actually literally making them today. So they'll be in stock tomorrow. I don't know if they're, uh, I don't know if, she, I think she might be out of stock today, but they should be in stock tomorrow. I think she said, um, what is it? Storm winds. I'm going to, I'm going to put a link in the chat for you guys. So it's even easier for you to, to go check it out. Go check out her website. She's got all kinds of stuff. She makes all kinds of pen blanks too, and other really awesome artistic types of things. So make sure to go and check out stormwindshq.com. Um, I, I forgot to look at, is she still here? Jen was in the chat. She might, she was, she's literally making them while she was watching the show. Let's see. Dragon, baby dragons. There it was. I don't think there was any in, in stock, but she has a few different sizes. We did the two inch guy today and then she's got one inch and two inch. Yeah. She's out of baby dragons today, but they should be in stock. I think tomorrow guys. So, uh, and they'll probably be gone quick. So make sure you get in there and, and snag them. Um, and like I said, check out the pen blanks and all that stuff. And we'll do a little bit more with this. Just want to make sure I've had, the problem is I've had issues typically when I'm using Alumilite clear, but on, on smooth surfaces, sometimes I get those kind of shiny spots. So I'm really hoping that I don't get that on these. Um, we'll have to see. So I'll, I'll post pictures of the, I'll, I'll be able to pull that out tomorrow. Um, and I'll post pics on Instagram and Facebook. Actually, I'm not going to be here tomorrow. Tomorrow's my day off. So Friday, <laughs> I'll post pics of how they turn out. Um, I'll probably just leave it in the pressure pot until Friday. It'll be fine. Um, but yeah, so I'm pretty excited about those things. And big thank you to Jen for sending me the baby dragons. Um, she actually, it was pretty cool. She took one of the, the classes that I taught down at just the resin casting basics, you know, 101, um, down at Turner's Warehouse, I, I want to say two years ago. Well, obviously it wasn't last year. So at least like two, maybe three years ago. And so it's really cool seeing her making all kinds of really creative, cool stuff out of resin. So um, pretty cool. Thank you, Jen, for sending those. I, I love them. They're really awesome. I'm actually, I think I'm going to uh, order some of the one inch ones. I'm going to, I'll probably wait for this wave to, <laughs> to die down of, of people, you know, hopefully buying lots of them right now. But um, I might, I might see what, what other different color combos you can do. And, and I'm, I'm thinking I want to try maybe a bottle stopper and see how they work too. So should be pretty awesome. But anyway, guys, uh, I know it's kind of a short one. And, and just to let you know, the, the streams, I'm going to have to cap streams this year at an hour and a half total. Um, even the turning ones. Uh, just this year, my schedule, I, I'm going to need to have more time to do other things. I, there's a few other responsibilities that are cropping up outside of work <laughs> that I'm going to need to take care of. So I'm trying to kind of budget my time and get my schedule so that I, I have you know plenty of time for you guys. But I'm, I am going to have to cap the, the streams at about an hour and a half anyway. So just, just to warn you, but and I'm also playing with the schedule. I think we're going to be doing streams on Wednesdays from now on. 
I'm not 100% sure yet. It's probably either going to still be on Friday at 3 or Wednesday at 3. I will let you know. I need to figure out my schedule and, and work. It's tough. It's like I have this. It's like one of those puzzles where you're like, okay, and I got to do this at this time. And I got to work my puzzle and, and figure out my the, the, the most the best way to, to schedule all of my time so that I make sure that I'm getting everything done. So anyway, guys, I appreciate you coming, joining the fun tonight. I can't wait to see how this turns out. Again, thank you to Jen for sending this in. Go check out stormwindshq.com. And I hope you guys have a wonderful evening tonight. And uh, I will, like I said, I will post all the pics when I pop this thing out on Friday. Most likely it should be Friday, probably afternoon. So anyway, guys, have a wonderful evening, and I will see you guys on the next stream.